Hi, this is Yumi with Sword and Steel, and today, perhaps a little bit late, but things have been strange. Uh, I have here with me to enjoy the 466 magazine of White Dwarf. See what's inside, see that there are uh, some new rules perhaps to look through, uh, and a glorious amount of new information and stories and beautiful miniatures and all that. I hope you enjoy it with me as we go through. Here it is. So we've got big guns in a tale of four warlords, new rules for torchbearer fleets, fantastical realms, cities of Sigmar, uh, 40 years of battle reports revisited, new rules for Blood Bowl referees, and much more for Warhammer Age of Sigmar and Warhammer 40,000. I'm a bit late on this one. I've been busy, but now I'm going to take my uh, enjoyment of it fully. The Age of Jervis. Jervis Johnson. All about him. Nice. There are certainly better people to wax eloquently about Jervis's storied career, and Phil Kelly does just that in the worlds of Warhammer. However, it is my privilege to say a few words of my own on behalf of White Dwarf. Nice. Uh, I will get to that. All right, and someone said I should enjoy number page number five. That'll be interesting. <laughs> is it his face or is it the tank? Oh my gosh! Look at that little fella. Oh my goodness, his name is Sigmar. But I've included one that looks like his name is Sigmar. Why, hello, Sigmar. From Belgium. And look at that tank. Uh, the Macarius Vulcan by Andrew Gray. Oh, it's Sigmar. Um, oh, it's such a nice tank, too. Wow, that's really nicely done. Ooh, this is cool. It looks like they fashioned it out of this picture. Nice. Oh, uh, I like the backdrop. Very cool. By Christoph Kell. Happy living, Sigmar. Let's see. The Araman Arc Sorcerer of the Thousand Suns by Rune Visgard. Very pretty. Very prettily done. Uh, Captain General Trajan Valorous by Matt Bunn. Nice. Look at that metal. Nicely done. Iron Jaws Mega Boss by Ian Hannum. Ooh, nice color scheme. Mmm, Defenders of Koth. Ooh, pretty blue. Look at that pretty blue. Pretty. Painting question. Cat Falk. Oh, we've got a color scheme for this guy. He's striking, isn't he? Ooh, pretty. Uh, the Lady Allender by Tybalt Lily. Pretty. An Ask Rom Brindle question. In the spotlight, Jesus Moreno Ramos. Oh, nice custodes. Look at that. Dreadnought. Cool. I like this style uh, basing. It looks very nice. Pretty. It sets off those that golden armor very nicely. Hmm. This was by oh yes, Jesus, Jesus. And how he did it, written out there. So pretty. Bum, bum, bum. Worlds of Warhammer. Worlds of Warhammer delves into the background of the Age of Sigmar and the 41st millennium, looking at how stories are created and legends are born this month. The very greatest, the greatest of legends is being celebrated, the Celestine Prime himself, Jervis Johnson, with Phil Kelly. Looking very striking, Jervis. Or should I say Mr. Johnson? However you like. Ooh, pics. The Warhammer Age of Sigmar Player's Code. I enjoy reading through that. An eternity of war games. After nearly four decades of service, Jervis Johnson is handing over his games designer baton, plus one to hit, 
To a new generation of creative minds, here we take a look at some of the many games and projects Jervis has worked on over the years. Thanks, Jervis. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, goodness. Wow, that's a lot. Oh, we're not even done. Oh. Cool. I remember, I recognize. Oh, I remember Battle for Skull Pass. Ah, that's my first box set, where my first orcs came from. My first models for Age of Sigmar, er, for, for Warhammer 40 came, came out of that box. All the works. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Ooh, desired, deserved retirement. I'll let you read through that. In the grim darkness of the far future, there is only war. Not to mention new torchbearer rules and background, a new Flashpoint series, a tale of four warlords, and two short stories. Dun, dun. Uh, the galaxy is being torn asunder with new war zones, exploding to life with ever increasing frequency. In the first installment of a new series, we travel deep into the Ultima Segmentum to the beleaguered worlds of the Octarius Sector, where something wholly alien is about to occur. <laughs> Cordon Impenetra. The Dark Krakens. Gee, that doesn't sound good. Captain Krigeni Sexio. That's a lot of vowels. Sayor Lucior of the Fifth Company. Lexicanum Perion Nuari. <laughs> Flashpoint Dark Kraken Strike Force. Lucior. I see. Lucior. Gloomwalkers. Oh. <laughs> Deep beneath the mirror sea, space marines of the Dark Krakens chapter make slow progress towards their objective. The denizens of the deep watch them hungrily, for there are new predators in the ocean that consume all in their path. Mmm. Mmm. Sounds fun to read. Fun, 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 fun. Oh! The Dark Krakens. Okay. Uh, the war in the Octarius Sector has begun. The Tyranids of High Fleet Leviathan running rampant across the countless worlds. But has the alien menace met its match with the Dark Krakens, a highly adaptable chapter of Primaris Space Marines? Uh, designer's note. The Dark Krakens were created during the Ultima founding and are a successor chapter of the Sal Salamanders. For all rules purposes, we suggest that the Dark Krakens are considered to be a pal salamander successor chapter, okay, and so they can use all the rules for a salamander successor chapter that are presented in the Codex Space Marines and Codex Supplement Salamanders. We also recommend that the Dark Krakens use the fearsome aspect and indomitable successor chapter tactics as described in Codex Space Marines to best reflect their chapter style of waging war. Ooh, look at you. Um, if you are playing in the Bianzir's Hollow or Octarius Flashpoint, you can, when mustering your army, select any of the following units. If you are playing a Crusade battle, these units can be added to your order of battle, and they are treated as named characters, but they can only be included in your army if you are playing a battle in one of the listed Flashpoints. Named characters and warlord trait, Acrigeni, Lucy, you, Acrigeni, got it. Or Crigeny. 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 In British voice. Crigeny. I don't know if that works. Fear made manifest is their war is his warlord trait and Peron 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 Uari has rights of war. Okay, let's see. What do you do? Crigeny. Crigeny. Cryogeny. Could be cryogeny. Uh, movement of 6 plus, 2 plus to hit, 2 plus to, I'm uh, sorry, 2 plus weapon skill, 2 plus blitz skill, 4 strength, 4 toughness, 6 wounds, 5 attacks, 9 leadership, 3 plus. To save, 
He's equipped with a bolt pistol, Raven's Reach, which is a gun of some kind, Ice Piercer, which is a melee weapon of some kind, frag grenades, crack grenades, your army can only include one, so the bolt pistol is just a regular bolt pistol, Raven's Reach has a 36 inch range, heavy one, five strength, AP minus two, three damage, okay. The Ice Piercer is melee, uh, has a strength of plus two, so six, AP minus three, two damage, and then Fragranix and Krakenase. He has Angels of Agus, Angels of Death, a Space Marine's ability, an Iron Halo for of a four plus invuln save, Rites of Battle Aura, while a friendly Dark Kraken's core unit is within six inches of that model each time a model in that unit makes an attack, reroll hit rolls a one. A hunter of great beasts. Each time this model makes an attack against a monster unit, you can reroll the wound roll. Nice. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Captain of the Fifth Company. If he's included in your Crusade army, he automatically gains the Master of the Marches honorific. See the Codex Space Marines. Even though he cannot normally gain any battle honors, this does not increase his Crusade points. Sorry, does not increase his crusade points. If there is already a Dark Kraken's model with that honorific in your order of battle, you cannot add him. Okay. Uh, Imperium Adestis Astartes Dark Kraken's inventory character, Primaris Captain, and Cryogeny. Peron Iwari. Iwari. Is there points cost around here? Do you? Ah, there are. Points cost. Do -do -do. Uh, Cryogeny. Cryogeny is one. 10 and Peri, per, Perion is 100. Okay, Mr. Wari. Mm. Uh, 6 inch movement, 3 plus weapon skill, 3 plus ballistic skill, 4 strength, 4 toughness, 5 wounds, 4 attacks, 9 leadership, and 3 plus save. He's equipped with a bolt pistol, the Knight Claimer, frag grenades, crack grenades, and you'll only include one. Well, so far, Cryogeny for 10 more points seems to be far better. Let's see. Night Claimer. Six strength. Well, plus two strength, so six strength. Minus three AP, two damage. So that's the same as the Ice P Piercer up there. Okay. Otherwise, the same. Angels of Death. A psychic Hood. Each time a Deny the Witch test is taken for this model, if the unit attempting to... Ah, he's a Psyker. If the unit attempting to manifest the Psychic Power is within 12 inches of this model, add one to that Deny the Witch test. Sure. Uh, wave Caller. Each time this model manifests a Witch Fire Psychic Power, add one to the number of mortal wounds inflicted. Alright. And a Psyker, you, you can use two Psychic Powers in your Psychic phase. That's nice. And attempt to deny one. And you know, smite and two psychers, psychic powers from the librarius discipline. Okay, that's alright. Yeah, that's alright. And he's Imperium, Adeptus Astartes, Dark Reckons, Infantry, Character, Primary, Psyker, Librarian, and Perion Uari. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> theater of War. Um, some stats for a Theater of War. Fun times, dangerous specimens, battle plan, or mis flashpoint mission, a tale of four warlords, space marines, necrons, sisters of battle, and orcs. Orcs, yes, orcs, orcs, orcs. The sons of Medusa, here again. Ooh, nice. Mm, repulsor. Mm hmm. Hello, Joel again. Uh, sending troops to the front of the biggest project. Looking lovely. Ooh, ancient door, dwarf. Pretty. Looking good. <laughs> mm, the Thocked Dynasty. Oh, yes. I really love your color scheme. I remember this. Oh, pretty. Ooh. Getting a model on the go. I've stolen a march on next month's projects by planning out how I want to paint my monolith. Oh, pretty, 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 pretty. By Jonathan Stapleton. Oh, pretty. Ooh, pretty bases too. <laughs> Order of the Argent Shroud by Drew Paley's. 
Saints, let's see the ink. Ooh, whoa. Intense. Wow. That's cool. The incandescent. And how did you do that? Oh, I'll leave it to the people who read the White Dwarf. <laughs> oh, but that's cool. Oh, that's really cool. What took off? Lydia Grant, how's your... S Ooh, nice. Look at those guys. I like how sh sharp and shiny those teeth are. Teeth are looking. Hey, little guy. Hey. Oh, love it. The army is looking so good. Ooh, yeah, see what they look like so far. So pretty. Look at that shiny, shiny, shiny metal. Oh, gorgeous. Order of the Arch and Shroud. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. What a striking Celestine. Oh, orcses, orcses, orcses. I say orcses, but that is an awful lot of grots. Look at all those grots. Grots, 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 grots. Grots, 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 grots. Hmm, shop attack on grots, grots, grots. Some orcses. Oh, a few orcses. I like the battle paint. I think I'm seeing on some of them. I really like how you look. You are lovely looking orcs. A light in the darkness. During the Indomitus Crusade, Torchbearer Task Force were assigned the duty of furnishing Space Marine chapters with Primaris technologies. They are amongst the most clandestine and important enactors of Rubuti Gilliman's grand strategy. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Formation of the first torchbearers. The mission before all. Shield Captain Grantis. Mm, so much lore. Ooh, the hunt for Morwen. Having traveled across the galaxy in search of the Knights of Morwen, Custodian Demetriad and Arcan Arcanalist. Arcanalist. Copernos, Copernos, finally discover a clue to their whereabouts. But as with all things, such secrets come at a cost. Someone like this little story. Uh, Torchbearer's Crusade Force. <laughs> Requisitions, bonding phase. Follow these thing, battle crates. Oh, we've got our um, things that we can take out of the book. Predators of the Deep. Oh, it's a a uh, event table. Hmm. Battle traits. Oh, okay. Uh, when a torch bearer's unit gains a battle trait, you can use one of the tables below. And set one of the tables in the Warhammer 40k core rulebook. I determine what battle trait has been gained. To do so, roll a d6 and a ah. Consult their appropriate table. Well, neat. Custode character units, Astartes character units, and Mechanicus tech priest units. Neat. Uh, these are Elnos Lawkeeper and Red Cur Forge Beard. Hmm. Hmm. Crusade relics. New rules. Stalker Helm, Helix Pattern Narcissium, Blade of Bonding, Orb of Cleansing, Emissaries Emer Emperatus, no, Emissaries Emperatus, pretty. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. The Emissaries Emperatus are among the most powerful of the Empire's guardians, Emperor's Guardians, formally tasked when, with delivering the Emperor's word to the corners of the galaxy, many joined Ruti Gilliman's torchbearer fleets at the inception of the Andromedus Crusade. Why do you look short to me? I don't know. It's, maybe it's the big helmet. 
Mm -hmm. Echoes from the Warp. Echoes from the Warp is a regular column about the rules, tactics, and the ongoing development of Warhammer 40,000, presented by the team's games developers. This month's article is about secondary objectives and how to get the most out of them. Uh, more player agency. This is with Robin Crudence. Uh, was killed in the fight phase. But he had enough command points to use the only in death stratagem. And so he came back with one remaining. Bum, 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 bum. All right, uh, seem an army challenging to achieve. Make tough choices. Keep the game evolving. Mm -hmm. Ooh, pretty. Pretty. Oh, I'm so excited for those dragons. So excited for the dragons. Love the dragons. From the maelstrom of a sundered world, the eight realms were born, and with their birth began a war to claim them. A creative focus this month are on the colorful armies of the cities of Sigmar. <laughs> uh, Fantastical Realms is an ongoing series of articles showing you how you can build and paint your Warhammer Age of Sigmar armies based around the mortal realms they live in. In this installment, in this installment, we pack our bags and head for the cities of Sigmar. Which one, I wonder? Free City Savior. The city is unleashed. The living city. Colors of the great cities. Oh, that's nice. Uh, we got Anvil Guard, the living city. Phoenicium. Great Water Fastness. Hammer Hall. Tempest Eye. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's it. Anvil Guard. In more focus, I guess. Uh, by Ben Johnson. Ben is well known on the tournament scene for his monster heavy armies, which are better now. Uh, but this time his monsters are made of metal and their claws are deadly cannons. Ben tells us all about his steam tank army. Woo! Look at all those guys. What a beast. The Iron Squadron. Squadron. Wow. Intense. I like it. Those must be so nasty. I'd want to play against that just to see how exactly I fall. Converting and painting models for the cities of Sigmar. Oh. Dwarden Rune Lord by Ash Low. Very cute. I like his glorious beard. Mm. Wildwood Rangers and, and, and Eternal Guard by Andrew King. Wow. You look great. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, Free Guild Great Swords by Luke Dunford. Ooh. Striking. Oh, I like you. Wild Riders by Andrew King again. I love this style. Very cool. I have these models somewhere. One day I shall get to them. Ooh, look at you. Look at you. Steam Tanks by James Gallagher. Oh my gosh. Onagadoon Crawlers I do recognize. Oh, oh, oh I like. Oh, oh, I like these models. <gasps> now I want Honor Gajoon Crawlers with these models. Oh, that'd be cool. Oh, I take these models. I take these models, paint them red for Stouty's Eight. Let's see, the Hero of Sunheim by Chris Christian Hardy. Ooh. Oh, I recognize. I recognize this hand. Where's that coming from? Oh, really cool models. Where are you from? These models are part of the warband from the Free City of Sunhain, as some of my friends and I created. The lady on the left is the Mother Superior. Looks good. Um, who convert is converted from the Inquisitor Greyfax with the head of one of the Gemini Superior. 
Cool. Uh, next is Mrigor, warrior of Heish, who was converted from the slaughter priest. I knew I, I knew that looked very familiar. What in the world? He's got candles floating on him. That's intense. Uh, with storm cast legs and Rabute Gilliman's head. Cool. Wow. And then the warrior Ada, Ida, is converted from the Kalidus assassin with a skull for a head. Yeah, it was intense. Last up is the Griff Hound, Harla. Looking lovely. Whew, oh, so pretty. Uh, I'm gonna do that sort of thing. Now I'm, now I'm eager to get some custom models on the go. Mm, Heroes of the Sun Hymn by Kristen Hardy continued. Mm. What, what is with all of these candles? It can't be comfortable. You know, they're gonna go through walking and the candles are gonna be melting over their face and they're gonna be constantly putting back the wax and they'll be getting it in their eyes. On the other hand, if, I guess if you're always running, the wax will always be going. It's, it's, I'm questioning their choices in life, that's all. It looks freaky, though, I must say. Wow. You be an unpleasant person to look at, aren't you? Uh, the Grand Maester of Sinheim by a Nurgle champion. Ah, that's why you're... You make me creeped out. On the right is Rigor, converted from a slaughter priest. Mm-hmm. Mm. However, as an emissary of Ulgu, all of his many candles have been snuffed out. Oh, okay, that's fine then. That's why he's not going to be covered in wax and he won't be able to see anymore because they aren't melting anymore. They're just stuck like that. Okay, I get it. That's fine. Lord Ordinator of, by James Gallagher. I recognize you. I recognize this pose. I've assembled this pose before. Have I painted it? Lord Ordinator de Tiros Galleris. Uh, doesn't mention where it's from, but I know I've I've never seen you somewhere. Mmm, looks good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ooh. That's a lovely board. Mmm. I really like that board. Ooh, pretty board. That would be a fun board to play on. Uh, into the cities of Sigmar, the free cities of the mortal realms boast impressive and eclectic armies made up of well-trained regiments of men, elves, and dwarden. So what better way to show off the majesty and splendor of the cities of Sigmar than with two awe-inspiring awe army displays? Looks fantastic. Look at you. Ooh, I recognize that hair. So they made it themselves. Either way, really cool models. Ah, uh, so cool. Oh, it looks great. The Dark Water Syndicate. Hmm. By Henrik Gunnelassen. In Sweden. Ah, oh, so nice. So, so nice. Oh, so, so many things to look at. Ooh, you look cool. I like you. Oh, you're, um, I recognize that head. That, you do look more stately when you're not on a, uh, uh, slaughter priest? Mm, one of the corn priests or guy with a big spear. I just call him, uh, yeah, he's Stabby McStabbeth, so I don't remember what his actual name is. He looks good, though. Mm. So many cool models. Wow. Nice scenery. Scenery so pretty. Oh, you're lovely. Someone's sitting on the back of you. Is that a revised 
Um, what is it? A revised. Who are you? Mind. I swapped Selenor's head. Ah, so it is. Uh, I knew this the moment I saw Selenor that I want to convert them into a monster for my army. I swapped Selenor's head, so it's supposed to be a mind stealer pharynx, I guess. But with the glorious body of Selenor from the. Um, why am I forgetting his name? You know. Ah, Teclas, Teclas. Cool. Very cool. It wasn't easy with making the rider. Inari Visarg. So he felt like the perfect model to represent a mute warrior monk riding into battle on an arcane monstrosity. I used them as an anointed riding the Frostheart Phoenix. Oh, cool. That's what I was looking for. What were you using them as? Very cool model. I likey. I really like how you put that together. So nice. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Free Guild of Hallowheart. Oh, pretty. Pretty. Is that a horse? A Pegasus? Hmm. Hmm. What in the world did you use? These all look like little phoenixes. Cool. The piercing bolts of burning are led by Anastasia, guardian of the seventh key. Uh, our sisters of the watch bodies, free guild arms and crossbow stocks, playing parts from the sisters of the watch, cool, plus heads from Necromunda Escher gangs and female stormcast eternals. Cool. Oh, love that. Oh, look how pretty that is. Look at that scene. Oh my goodness. Hmm. That, that's definitely from something, some kit. Don't know what. From. Oh, is it from? Is it from uh, that kit that was just all big skulls? Must have been. Must be. Well, I like how you used it. Very much so. And the waterfalls and the vines and the little trees. Mmm, so nice. Mmm, 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 mmm. Ooh, you're a nifty looking piece. I really like how you painted it. My Lumlark of Heish, known as the Gift of the Gateway. On a Bastilla, on a Bastilla Ah, uh, so cool. I'm just, ooh, who are you? Wow, you're cool. Bright Mage of, is Caleb Kang? Volk, no, that can't be it. That's you. Roxana the Incandescent is a sorceress. Magebane Dungeons of Flames Ward. Nope. Converter Terrier Blood Bowl Cheerleader. Neat. A flaming hand from the Sister of the Thorn, a Drukari head, and a top knot. Some flames taken from a burning chariot of Zinch. Ah. Uh, neat. Very neat. Very neat. Oh, I'm just going to just going to keep looking all over the place. Oh, so pretty, so pretty. Just, just enjoy that. Ooh, the J Files. Jervis Johnson. Uh, Jervis has been a stable part. Yes. What is this one about? The J Files are an anomaly in the space time continuum, dragged kicking and screaming from the days of White Dwarf's past. In this very last and very special J Files column, Jervis muses on his time at Games Workshop and his hopes for a bright and shining hobby adventure. Well, I'll let game uh let's absolutely the white dwarf be the one to tell that story i'll go back and read it later okay temporal distort jervis johnson battle report special Ooh, i will also let uh people who are enjoying that temporal distort Ooh, so much information from the looks of it mm, building your party um okay the cursed city of Ulken. Ulfenkarn has been overrun by the undead. Its populace cooed by the half-feral vampire Rudikar the Wolf, fondly named Ragamuffin in our parts, I'll have to tell you. In this month's article, we take a look at party builds. Will you go in the gun 
all guns blazing, all hammer swinging, or a combination of the two. Personally, we just chose the characters that we liked, and we went with that. That's it. Yeah. The traditional party. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't go that way. <laughs> the juggernaut party. The glass cannon party. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we uh, didn't go that way either. We went with the, this looks good party. The, the aesthetics party. That, that would be us. Glory points. Uh, glory points is our column all about Warhammer Underworld's dire chasm curated by the game's developers of the box game studio. This column delves into the development of the game plus rules, tactics, and gameplay. This time we talk about designing warbands with John Bracken. <laughs> Hello, John. Ah, pretty warbands. Pretty warbands. <laughs> wow. That's a big bow. How practical is that? Just three arrows just in... Uh, uh, maybe. I mean, if you've practiced enough, you can do anything, right? Vital Cargo. Oh, in Aeronautica Imperialis. I need to deliver vital supplies to an embattled and stronghold. I need to extract a key military figure before their position is overrun. Then you need to employ the services of an Arvis Lighter, the logistical workhouse, horse, workhouse, of the Aeronautica Imperialis. Eh. Uh, you'd be very cute. Super cute little dude. I guess you're not little. I just zoom in so you're big. You still look little to me. You should, probably aren't, but oh, you still look little. Dee -dee 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 -dee. Oh, new rules. I will let you guys read that. Grand Grot Derby. What? What? <laughs> that sounds interesting. Red cards and rules keepers for Blood Bowl. Uh, as the ultimate arbiters of the Blood Bowl pitch, referees have the last say when it comes to setting off misbehaving players. Here we present new rules for using Blood Bowl referee models in your own games. Lace up your boots and prepare to kick off. Choosing a ref, being a sent off, referee rules. <laughs> Blocking the ref, referee profiles. Just, you'd want just the just the job you'd want to be a ref for Blood Bowl. That's just that's just what I'd be doing. The heir of Isildur is Isildur Isildur. That's it. At least that's what it was in the video. Why is it I S E? Ah, uh, stand men of the West. All about Aragorn. Ooh. I remember that scene. I painted that scene. No, I did. I painted something similar. I painted the scene where they met. Uh, they first met the betrayers. <laughs> King Elisar. He's one of them rangers. Hmm. I be behemoth, behemoth. Ooh. All alone in the realms of a by Eric Gregory. All alone in the realms, a cunning grot by the name of Yagel ponders his future. Umi's settlements are everywhere. Big beasts could eat him, and his tribe are not keen on seeing his face again anytime soon. If only he had an ally. Really, a little grot meets be behemoth. Behemoth. Keep messing it up with Dungeons and Dragons. Behemoth. That sounds like a hilarious little story to read. I'm very excited for how that turns out. Oh, I'm gonna come with you. So much to read in this. So much to read in this. This sounds super fun. I grot with a a god. Yeah, let's do that. Inside the studio, as we come to the end of the magazine, we take a look at the games uh, people have been playing and the models they've been painting in the studio over the past month. This issue, medics, plus ogres. More hobby bingo fun and loads of tanks on parade. What do you have? We've got Emperor's 
Beer's Druid, which looks very nice, by Tangui Jolivet. He looks great. I really like how you look. Um, am I seeing... I'm seeing Tech Priest, Space Marine, and... That looks... Yeah, that must be a Justicar. No, not just a card. Judicar. Ah, Judiciar. Once they added the eye. Mm -hmm. You'd be cool. You definitely look like you're from uh, Eshergain. Yeah, I'd say so. Translator Sebastian Brabsh. Brabsh. Cool. Ogors. Very pale ogors, like in the cold. Woohoo! Dan Harden is in. Dan Harden, Jonathan Stapleton, and Ben Humber. Getting there. Oh my gosh! Someone finished. Someone got bingo. By uh, Matt Hudson. Ooh. Nice. Uh, what's his name again? The traitor? Stealer of things? Torgelius. Yeah. Ooh, wow, you're a really nasty looking conversion of the Judiciaire again. Cool. Oh, he's using a book. What is it? Oh, it's supposed to be a Judi Judiciaire. Okay, cool, cool. I miss that. Looks cool though. Ah, cool. Lyle Lowry. Rats. Rats, rats. Ooh, all the objectives and some rats. For Curse City. Look, yours look much better than mine do currently. Mine do not look finished at all. Barely, barely finished. I played with paints on mine. Do 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 do. Armies on parade. Twenty twenty. The Athonian Tank Corps, looking lovely. I like these. Uh, all that red snuck in there. Mm hmm. Hmm. Like your tanks. Danger! Danger sound! Ooh! Cute! It's a cute little conversion. I recognize you from the silver hands. Cool, cool. Ooh! Sentinels? Very cool. And that's it. Oh. Where did... I don't remember reading much on the Tyranids. Well, I suppose the story... Like, yeah, the story was on Tyranids. Um, more Tyranids? Next week, perhaps? Alright, well, that was fun. Super fun. Loved it. Had to come back. Lots of great stories in there. Very excited to read through them. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I always enjoy going through and seeing what other people in the hobby are doing and seeing what they're painting and creating. It's such great fun and a relief from the vigors of regular life. So that's it. I will catch you in the next video. Bye! Oh, and for those who are interested in this color scheme, it was fun. Uh, I was testing, testing out colors. Uh, I put on a base of Wraith Bone. And then I played around with a combination of mostly Talisar Blue contrast paint and the Technical Paint Tesseract Glow, which I thought would make a really cool combination. And I like it. Um, I'm going to keep fooling around with them. So pretty. I'm very curious where I could put it. It'll work even better on something that's textured and not flat like my nails. Hmm.